Todd Mansell, the product application specialist for Caterpillar Paving. Today we're going to do a walk around on the GC SCOM series. As we approach the machine to open the hood, I want to take a look down on the ground, make sure there aren't any liquid or fluid leaks or spills on the ground, just to give me an indication maybe if there's any hose leaks or anything like that. So what I'll do now is open the hood on the machine. I'm going to look at this fuel water separator here and I can see there isn't any water in here right now. If there was, I can loosen that bowl on the bottom here and capture that water, drain that water out of that fuel water separator. The next thing I'll, I'll look at here and check is my def fluid level. So that's sometimes called the blue, but the diesel emission uh, fluid. So make sure that is good, that level is good. And the next thing I'm going to check here is the oil level dipstick. So what I want to do here is just pull that out, check it, make sure it's in the operating range, I'm not low on oil, and I'll put that back in, we look good here today. And if I did have to add oil, here's the oil filler port right next to the oil dipstick check. Another thing up here is a secondary air filter restriction flow check valve. So this is something here. Again, if, if there is any restriction to the airflow, meaning the air filter is plugged or dirty or needs replacing, that will show up in the operator station as, a, as an indication. But again, this is a secondary check on that. And when the machine is running at, at high idle, if that is in the, the red zone, that means your air filter needs to be checked and cleaned. So the next thing I'm going to look at as I come around here or is the tire condition. I just want to I want to look at the sidewalls, look at the treads, make sure there's no big cuts or marks on these tires. Do a visual check on the on the tire pressure just to make sure they're not looking flat. I'm also going to glance down in between the tire and the frame of the machine here just to make sure that there isn't any any debris or anything stuck in there that could be rubbing or scraping against the sidewall of the tire. Another thing I want to check here on my daily walk around and my daily checks is the hydraulic oil level. This sight gauge here right now is empty or low. If there was, I should be able to see some hydraulic oil in that sight gauge. And when it's cold, typically you'll just see a little bit at the very bottom here. When it gets up to operating temperature, you'll see, see that indicator half full or more with hydraulic oil which is uh, red colored. So that's my sight gauge for hydraulic oil. This machine needs, needs some hydraulic oil. Another thing I'll just point out on our way around here, and this is a, a once a week uh, grease point for our steering cylinder. So here's one grease zerk, here's the other uh, for greasing that steering cylinder. And again, that's just a once a week uh, grease point. Nicely positioned up here and remote so that we don't have to get underneath the machine to, to grease that steering cylinder. So again, that's just a once a week check there. As I continue around the machine, I'm going to look, always looking at hoses and just keeping my eyes open to make sure there aren't any leaks or hoses rubbing, any of that sort of thing. We've got good protection here on these hoses, but it never hurts to take an extra look. I'm going to go in the drum here and look at those uh, check those rubber isolators or iso mounts. Those are there to separate vibration from the drum and the frame of the machine for operator comfort and, and machine vibration. But I always want to check those rubber isolators, make sure they aren't uh, separating from the steel, make sure they don't have a lot, aren't cracking or that sometimes they can be torqued. So I just want to make sure those are in good, good shape on both sides of the machine. As I continue walking around here, I'm going to look down in here, check my scraper bars, make sure those are, are not rubbing tight on the drum. I want to make sure there isn't any debris down in there that could be rubbing or scraping like a rock or maybe even a tree branch or a root or something like that. We'll continue around, do some 
again, just always taking a visual on the machine, maybe even glance down and look at those uh, bottom scraper bars, make sure all the bolts are there and they're not, not coming loose or anything like that. I'll continue walking around the machine. I'm now on the left side of the machine. I'm going to do the same thing here, checking those rubber isolators inside the drum. Again, just checking for any separation of the rubber from the steel or any cracking or torsion or torque in those. Okay, now we've done our ground level walk around checks and I've got up in the operator station of the machine. The first thing I'm going to do before I buckle in is just check my mirrors and get those positioned where I want them, both my inside mirror here and my outside mirrors, just to make sure I got them aimed and positioned where I want them when I start operating. Next thing I'm going to do is just check the seat belt. So I'll pull the seat belt out, check it for any rips or tears in that seat belt, uh, make sure it retracts, pulls in and out of the holder properly. And I will now buckle myself in, in the machine. The last thing to do to complete our daily checks is, and re please refer to your OMM for the details on this, but once I do start the machine, I will put the propel lever in reverse with the park brake on, and I should be able to hear my backup alarm. So the backup alarm is the last ground level check to do on these machines.